Hello and welcome to the Miskatonic Playhouse. I'm T.A. Newman, your host. My team and I will be bringing to life cosmic tales using the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, which contains mature themes, horror, character death, and loss of sanity. Our mystery can be found in the Miskatonic repository where people like you and me can write scenarios for other players. We're proud to have this episode of the Miskatonic Playhouse sponsored by the Storytelling Collective, who provide an excellent course on scenario writing, which many of the team have taken to help improve their writing skills. We rejoin the investigators on December 5th at the annual Holmoth Christmas fundraiser, where Lady Tillenforth subverts the norm in scandalous high society disregard as she walks arm in arm with Andrew Bull charming anyone within arm's reach, regardless of his self-aware imposter syndrome. The good Professor Goodall butters up his disgruntled new best friend and professor, Jonathan Breeze, in his burgundy bow tie, whilst Clarence Crofter interrupts the mayor's anecdote in extremely poor taste. Now it's time to pour the mulled wine and roll the dice. Keeper, the stage is yours. Everybody kind of pauses and there's a moment. And the mayor just looks at you, leans in, Clarence. What the bloody hell are you doing, boy? Clarence laughs nervously. (laughs) I suppose... Your Worship, one could say that uh, maybe I should have ducked as well, like your hunting partner, (laughs) trying to turn it into a lighter situation. Clarence doesn't know how to apologise, but he tries to turn Uh, it to everybody's advantage. Can you make a luck roll for me? I will indeed. That is a 42 out of 55. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's not the mayor. It's one or two of the people around the mayor out of complete nervous tension. You hear someone to the side of the mayor just going, (laughs) and there's this like really awkward laugh. And then when that someone laughs, somebody else laughs. (laughs) You should have ducked. (laughs) And the mayor just kind of looks around. By that point, there's a few people laughing quite openly now. <laughs> should, have, should have ducked like the, like the boy and the mayor just leans in. You should have bloody ducked, boy. And then kind of leans back and looks at the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should have ducked, should have ducked and then looks back at you. <laughs> and he literally steps in front of you and just completely cuts you off from the conversation. You have not made a good impression, but... You haven't been kicked out of the party. Phew. Um, but every all the other investigators are, are witness to that as well. Um, you are now covered in drink. You still have Joshua uh, uh, Christopher's notebook, uh, the your your uh, opposing journalist. Uh, but you have been completely, shall we say, excommunicated from the mayor's current social circle. Is there any last thing you'd like to do before we whip over to one of the other investigators? I I think it's a case of. I know when I've been beaten, Clarence is going to head over to the corner, but start flicking through the notebook okay. while uh, alone. Okay. So uh, d- uh, we'll have you moving over to the corner and flipping through the notebook. We're going to uh, quickly jump to the professor and then go back to Lady Tillenforth and Andrew. Uh, professor Goodall, you, um, you, I believe, were looking towards the Christmas tree along with another individual. Yeah, well, the, the, the guy um, was talking about the what's that in the Christmas tree, which is intriguing. Uh, and he didn't answer the question, just he, he goes back towards Christmas tree, I think. Mm. Um, so I'm going to kind of follow him so I can see what he's talking about, because I can only presume it's something like, I don't know, some out of this world bauble <laughs> Um you uh no that's actually a really good idea and i wish i'd done that um uh he you go over to the tree with this individual and you're looking at the tree but more d- 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 more of what trains your eye is the individual who's looking at the tree and you can kind of see him uh, i've seen that one um uh, okay and you kind of see him lean in and he pulls out a scrumpled bit of paper and you see him kind of open up the paper Ugh. 
the bloody hell. But you can see now because he's kind of gone through and go, I've seen that one. And I saw that one. And ah, you can see that he's pointed out one or two other bits of paper and then he's he's picked one up himself. These scrumpled bits of paper that have been left in the tree. What would you like to do? So are they are they, are they literally kind of you know scrumpled up or are they rolled or just um, loose? They are uh, uh, scrumpled as if the, the paper has been taken and just scrumpled and then okay. like, in the tree. Okay. Um, I will grab the nearest to me um, and un unfurl it and see what it says. Okay. Then okay. you... Very... Something. <laughs> you uh you find a bit of paper you pull it out you unravel it and this is what you find before you um oh my word. a handout indeed would you mind it says um krampusnacht is coming soon coming soon coming soon krampusnacht is coming soon don't be naughty if you're bad, you'll be snatched up. Be snatched up. Be snatched up. If you're bad, you'll be snatched up by Gus von Krampus. If you misbehave, you'll I'll, if you misbehave, you'll be in his bag. Be in his bag. If you misbehave, you'll be in his bag. There's no escaping. He'll beat you up and drag you to hell. Drag you to hell. Drag you to hell. He'll beat you up and drag you to hell if you're a sinner. Krampus knack is coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. Krampus knack is coming soon. Don't be naughty. And there's a, and is that a blood stain at the bottom of the text? <laughs> you can see. Not only is it a, uh, uh, it, well, actually, it is, it is a blood stain, but it's not just as if uh, there's some kind of stain that's been smeared on it. It doesn't look like it's accidental. Um, hmm, let me just have a little think here. What could be a good role for this to have a real look at it? Hmm. Oh, I think it's it being a cult role because I've got a lot of skill in that. It, do you know what? Blood stains on manuscripts. I'm going to argue that could be an occultish thing. You you may have seen an occult manuscript or two uh, uh, with a bit of a blood spatter on it. So yeah, sure, let's go with an occult role. Okay. Always I completely fail it. <laughs> you failed it. I failed it. You should know, just as an aside, um, the last few games I've played, whatever the system may be, I've have a my I've got a really good ninety percent rate of failing every role at the moment. So excellent. Uh, I'm not, I'm excellent. I do think that this is a game though that absolutely applauds failure. It's got to be the best way to play. It's got to be the best way to play. Um, so you see this, there's this uh, blood stain at the bottom of this, this note. Um, okay, with a failed roll, how badly did you fail it, Mike? Uh, uh, um, I, I was off by about well, just under 20 points, so fairly bad. I mean, I, I'm going to presume that, you know, I've got a, I have got a reasonable occult score of 60. Yeah. I'm going to presume that I, I know who Krampus is because I understand the, yeah. you know, the um, the European uh, folklore to some degree um, with a skill that of that size, but, uh, I, but only in terms of, you know, what everyone else knows in terms of the, the law, that Krampus is a, a kind of the anti-Father Christmas but does all the same things except you know he's will take you take the children away if they're naughty kind of thing but it's all folklore all good harmless fun isn't it don't you know <laughs> absolutely the only off-putting thing is the blood but doesn't really make any sense but, why someone scrumpled up this but, but some, you know that christmas tree is a, it's, a, it's a real one isn't it obviously yeah and uh, it's got, you know there's a you know that 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 needles you know catching the catcher just on the end of the finger crikey you could get some you know these things pretty normal nothing to worry about here exactly explained away in the most reasonable manner perfect perfect 
Um, okay, and with that kind of that note, and yeah, there is the recollection of you know Krampus, and that there is a uh, Krampus knack. There is a there is a night uh, uh, of Krampus where you know, as as you know, all the naughty boys and girls, you know, they'll they'll get taken away, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The anti claws, um, you know, some religions known as Black Peter, Pedro Allegro. You you've got a sense of this. But everybody knows this, don't they? That are the reasonably well read within kind of you know European or continental kind of mythos. Um, you've got you've got an idea uh, of of these kind of occult goings on. Not sure about the blood though. Slightly off putting, but eh, sharp needles on the tree. Perfect explanation to whittle that one away. Let's jump back to Lady Tillenforth and Andrew uh, 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 the Bull Rincewind. Uh, sorry, I'm going to keep saying that. Um, you're over, you find uh, Lord Montgomery Blackwood, you find uh, Klaus Hastrum, they're chatting away as you walk over. I am actually going to ask you both just to make me a quick listen roll as you walk over, if that's okay. And you're mm -hmm. walking over with Benedict Grantham as well. I'm uh, good at this. 79 over 40. You hear the jazz band start back up. <laughs> uh, uh, I got a 34 over 70, so that's a hard success. Okay. Um, you hear two things. The first is you hear um, Lord Montgomery Blackwood explaining uh, something to um, Mr. Klaus Halstrom. Um, you're not quite sure what the context is, but you hear um, you you hear the hushed tone, but you're able to pick it out quite quickly. You hear the words. One of the after-dinner speeches has been completely cut out of the order of service. Yeah, uh, um, our man, Breeze, yeah, an outburst. Complete, complete lunacy. Outburst at the, the, the mayor, completely inappropriate. Um, yeah, we were thinking about not inviting him. And then you hear Halstrom in a relatively you know, um, thick German accent. Um, what? Not inviting him to his own retirement. He's serious? Yeah, very serious. And you kind of, you, you draw in uh, quite, quite close uh, at that point. The other thing you hear is... There are closed doors at the end of this room. Uh, so you came in through one set of double doors leading into this big kind of ballroom with the band and the tree and the drinks. On the other side of the room, there's another set of double doors. Um, behind that, uh, you hear a, 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 a some shuffling, some movement around. And then you almost, uh, you, you, you hear the door, what you presume, because the door is already closed, what you presume, you hear the door being unlocked. The, the double doors so imagine a big grand hall you've been in through one side through the double doors it's the other side of the room now the double doors on that side of the room that are being unlocked but you arrive with uh lord montgomery blackwood and mr klaus haustrom standing there and they see you arrive they kind of just stay in their own conversation what do you do well lady cordelia is gonna march straight up to Klaus and say, uh, uh, Nedzi Kanan Zulernen, Herr Hastrum, very pleased to meet you. What brings you to home of? Fräulein, I am here at the, the behest of the Lord Montgomery Blackwood. Lord uh, Montgomery Blackwood, this is uh, the, the, um, Herr Tillinforth's daughter, Lady Tillinforth. Oh, charmed. And I hold out my hand. And he will take your hand and he will give you a kiss on the hand. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you here, Lady Tillerforth. Is your father here? Uh, no, I, I, I don't believe he can make it tonight. Uh, I mean, what a wonderful, wonderful event. I thought it's going to be one of those stuffy affairs, but oh, this is right up my street. Nice bit of jazz music and all that. Yeah, yes. Well, you know, um, the mayor, he's uh, one for the most modern of uh, entertainment. Uh, approaches is, is very good yes jazz wonderful yes uh, I, I take it you know to prove um yes the um the piano is 
quite wonderful. <laughs> and he, yeah, you there, there is no role needed. Uh, just absolute humoring the situation. Uh, it appears that Lord Blackwood isn't really there for the festivities. Uh, but Klaus turns to you, uh, Mr. Halstrom, and he is an older gentleman. He is older. And he he's kind of um, standing there. He's kind of, you notice now that he's kind of leaning on a walking stick, uh, kind of like a black walking stick. Um, he just kind of, uh, yeah, it's wonderful that you are here. Um, but what, what brings you here, lady? Uh, well, I was invited. And when you're invited to a party, especially around Christmas, I mean, what else is, what else is a girl to do? Uh, sure, sure, I'm sure you are invited to many parties across the country, now the continent, huh? but uh, why, why here? What, what, what is it that brings you here? Well, maybe you can tell me. I mean, uh, it seems to have drawn quite a lot of interesting people. Uh, uh, this this Dr. Jonathan Breeze, uh, what, what do you know about him? I haven't oh, seen him about. He's quite brilliant, my dear, quite a brilliant man, but has all candles, uh, expire, light burns bright, but there's an end. As I only know too well. My dear, you, you are burning brightly. The rest of us, well, our, our, our wick <laughs> shortens. Uh, he is a, quite an expert in his field, but a new expert has been found. Uh, uh I'm not quite sure that I follow, sir. Um, uh, could you elaborate? What, what do you mean? Candles, spires and all that? <laughs> wait for the speeches, you. Wait for the, the speeches. And just as you hear the kind of the wait for your speeches, the doors, uh, Andrew, next to you, kind of sw w whip open. And you see that there is another room, almost kind of mirrored in size, another grand room next to it. And it's a big uh, uh, dining room. Uh, you can see that there are four large tables set in the room, uh, even just through looking through the doors without going in there. Uh, but there is a, a really long top table as well with a number of places uh, set. Um, Andrew, is there anything that you would like to do or say in this conversation? Um, Andrew has been waiting for his turn with uh, Benedict, is it next to him? What's his name? Benedict. Hey, Benedict. Um, <laughs> wait, waiting to be introduced. He, he kind of knows uh lord blackwood is it um yes. but he doesn't know if he knows him so he's there kind of waiting to be introduced by uh lady tillingworth but if if she doesn't do that and they're just there he's gonna <clears throat> uh um hello yes a wonder wonderful party thank you so much for the invitation everything is amazing uh yeah, yeah. lord blackwood i, I was uh, i've been following all your uh, philanthropy and all your work. And I've been so grateful for all you do for the community. I was wondering, what are you uh, working on now? Also, oh, excuse my manners. This is uh, Benedict, uh, Mr. Benedict, yeah. Um, Miss, what, what's your name again? <laughs> it's Mr. Grantham. I'm so sorry. I didn't Mr. introduce Mr. you both. Grantham, uh, Grantham. and uh, uh, um, Ram. Ram. Um. Your name. Oh, we uh, hired you. We hired you. Uh, on the on the. You're the one with the funny name. Oh, Bull. Bull. Yes. Oh, you do remember me. Oh, how mm. wonderful. And uh, yes, so I've, I've been, of course, ever since admiring uh, your work and, and what you do for the environment, which is mm. a very pressing matter, even though not everyone thinks so, but I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were very busy. New, new, new projects in line. Um, um, yes. Do you uh, do you do you sail, Paul? Oh, well, I've done a bit of sailing myself uh, um, throughout my travels, in, uh well, a little bit of uh, Asia and uh, a little bit of uh, Southern Europe. Mm. Very good, Paul. Very good. Uh, end of the speeches. Come and find me. Uh, business oh uh very well I, I did mean to ask um 
Uh, is is there an attendee named uh, Heather in this party that that you know of? Heather. Uh, but, but Mr. Grantham is looking for someone named Heather. Isn't that right? Uh, and he just kind of, um, yes. I'm sorry, sir. Do you know uh, Heather? You can see Lord Montgomery Blackwood looks a little bit put out that he's been asked if he knows a Heather. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of looks between the two of you and then just looks through the through the doors that have been opened. And then goes, he just kind of looks and goes, have a look at the seating plan. Oh, that's a that's a very smart suggestion, sir. Yes, it is. Good uh, I will find you after the speeches. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, well, let, let's go look at the tables. Um, so uh, you uh, you can move over to the, the, the seating. Bank. You actually notice that a lot of the guests are, um, they begin to actually kind of move through. And um, this is uh, uh, what you uh, kind of see. Uh, it is a seating plan, um, which you can deduce, see, presume, has a list of all of the guests there that you've seen this evening. And as you're looking at this, uh, one of the white gloved, the black suit, uh, suited kind of waiters, um, you you kind of hear a gong, uh, like a, a you yeah, know an announcement, a gong being rang, and everybody really starts to file through at this point, and you really kind of see. Um, but if you you know, you're standing there long enough, you see people begin to sit where they're supposed to, and as a result, you can begin to pin where people are. You the table that is left blank. That is your table. You are all sat at the table together. Uh, but you can see as you come in through the room and uh, the entrance to the room is on the far left of this seating plan. It's a long room, uh, much like the ballroom. So the first table that you would see is the table uh, that seats the Honourable uh, Benjamin Tyne, uh, Mr. Klaus Halstrom, Miss Emily Roberts, Mr. George Mountain and a Mr. Andrew Green. Then you'll see your table. Then the next table over, you'll see that there is a table that sits uh, Mr. Joshua Christopher, a Mr. Benedict Grantham, a Miss Charlotte Parsons, a Miss Millie Nottage, and a Dr. Samuel Weaver. And then on the following table, the furthest table, and again, there's a set of doors on the far end of the room. You can see here there is a Sir Augustus Blackwood, um, who, Andrew, if you'd like to give me a quick education role, you're welcome. And in fact, if any of you know uh, the Blackwood family, you're welcome to give me an education role. Uh, but also sitting at that table with Sir Augustus Blackwood is uh, Dr. Tobias Morton, a Mr. Charles Dunnock, a Mrs. Lauren Forsyth, and a Mrs. Amy Hill. Across the main table is a Dr. Sophia Jurak, uh, Jaruk, rather, the name that I can't pronounce that I uh, created, wonderful. A Mrs. Elizabeth Asherton, a Mayor Alan Hope, who is very central, a Lord Montgomery Blackwood, and at the far end of the, 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 the head table is a Dr. Jonathan Breeze. Um, could I ask you about your role, please? I failed with a 73 over 51. Uh, yeah, um, 73 over 51. Andrew has graduated from the School of Life. Yes, in the School of Life, unfortunately, <laughs> you can't connect the dots between a sort Augustus Blackwood and a Lord Montgomery Blackwood. There is clearly uh, no Seems connection. like a common name to me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, an entitled common name. There is no connection between them whatsoever. Um, outstanding. Uh, did anybody else uh, make that role, knowing perhaps that family? Not that they are a family. Nod, it, nod, wink, wink. What's my connection to the family? Do I know the family? I, I know them by reputation, or do I actually know them? Uh, you know um, the, the Halstrom family. Hmm. Um, so not necessarily the Blackwoods. Well, actually, I say that you, you might well know the Blackwood family. I mean, we're all, you know, sort we're of British all part aristocracy of the same kind of, you circle. know, people talk, people gossip. Uh, tell you what, give me a credit rating, please. Okie dokie. That is a 66 out of 65. I will spend one look. You're going to need that lighter. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. You uh, you know the family. Could you also make me... What did I ask for there, Fader? Was it an education role? Yep. 
Yeah, could you make me an education roll, please, just to see if you're able to um, connect said dots? Sure. Connect the name Blackwood with the name Blackwood. Well, <laughs> it's more about their relationship rather than just that there's a there's yeah, the same name. It's harder than you think. With, yeah. a, with a 90 education skill as well. So nice. um, 36 Very. out of 90, so that's a hard success. Okay. So, uh, Andrew, you know that there's a family connection. Of course you do. Why would they be at the same party with the same surname and have a similar look? But with your credit rating, you know, uh, Lady Tillenforth, that Lord Montgomery Blackwood is very much everything a traditional man of this class should be. His son, his eldest son, Sir Augustus Blackwood, is not a mirror image of his father. He is a much more genuine and nicer individual. He is someone who drives his father to enact in these environmental or, or educational endeavours that the Blackwood family are linked to. You know, probably because you're of the generation of Augustus Blackwood, the son, you're of that kin, that's your social circle. Uh, and your father is of Lord Montgomery's circle. You know that Sir Augustus, mainly by name, you 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 might not have met before, but you know of each other. He is the future of the family. He's he is the future of Holmouth. That's why he's here. And I'm. You, I, please go on. I'm going to relay that information to Andrew. And I'm going to say, I, th I think, dear, maybe you were barking up the wrong tree earlier. I think maybe the person we should be talking to about your uh, love of the environment would be Sir Augustus Blackwood, who is oh, the they're future. they're related, of the are they? He's his son, and he's oh. very unlike his father. Really? So, I, well, I, I will have to talk to him then. Maybe uh, he knows of this business. I, I might be invited to sail somewhere. Well, one can only hope, dear. I'm going to ask, uh, just before you go into this uh, this dining room, this large dining room that's been set out quite beautifully, the silverware is immaculate, the, 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 the crystal glasses, um, you can see that it is absolutely beautiful. And on each of the uh, uh, tables, on the side plate, is a little wrapped up present. Oh... Uh, your little secret Santa presents. Everybody seems to have got a little present, which is really exciting. Um, but uh, you can see that the mayor has taken his position at the head table, the centre of the head table, and he's kind of standing there. Everybody else is sat, and you're you're some of the last few to go through. But I'm going to say there's probably a a minute or two, maybe one, possibly two, depending on what it is, actions that each of you would be able to take before you probably err on the side of awkward social norms here and not getting to the table ready for the speeches. Uh, you know the speeches are coming, it's, the gong has been chimed, the event's happening. Let's start with the professor. Uh, any actions that you would like to make before you make your way over to the, dinner, the dining room? I want to check whether another one of these scrolled up pieces of paper in the crystal tree, whether they all say the same thing. So I'm just going to grab another one and read it on my way through to the dining room, you know, see what it is. You uh, can actually see that there's two others. Uh, okay. And <laughs> you do um, take them both. You can take them both. Uh, you can unscrawl them. You can take them with you and you can read them on your way. Uh, in fact, I'll give you a minute, uh, Professor, to read those. And then what I'm going to do is come back to you in a minute and ask you to read them out loud for us, okay? So if you're taking those pieces of paper and moving your way to the dining hall, I'll ask you to read those in a moment. Um, Clarence, what may I presume are you doing? Clarence has had a, a flick through the, the notebook just to see whether there's any really juicy or salacious gossip that uh, his rival has uh, detected. Juicy um, or salacious gossip. Absolutely. Um, any, anything particular that yeah you're, eye? you're kind of whipping through and you see a few things you see there's one um um there's there's a few notes of a few different individuals at the party um you can see uh that there's one there about um a dr samuel weaver yeah uh and the note there is is that he's he is in charge of the Holmouth Institute. 
uh, which is, uh, you, and you can see in brackets, it says refurbished Holmoth Castle, now uh, hospital dash mental illness. Okay. Um, you can see that there is a, a note uh, titled, uh, uh, oh, the name is Charles Dunnock. Uh, next to that, uh, you can see um, it says private investor. It says um, Obsidian Foundation. And it says uh, Project Valentine's. And the last note that you're able to see is for a doctor, and I'm going to say the name right, Dr. Sadia Jaruk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, the, the note says, uh, new curator, Holmuth Museum of Antiquities, question mark, question mark, Jonathan Breeze question mark question mark Excellent. and I'm gonna leave you with that Clarence as we go over to Andrew Bull uh, or Rincewind rather and uh, Lady Cordelia Tillenforth as you're walking through into the, the dining room is there any last things you'd like to do before you get there before we go back to the professor and hear what these uh, scraps of paper say um, uh, I feel like having looked at the names we turn to Benedict to Mr Grantham and say uh, well there seems to be no Heather here uh, Mr Grantham Y yes. Um, do you know Heather? What is her last name? Perhaps. Um, you you see that there's almost like a glaze in his eyes, and as you kind of ask that, he just looks at you and says, "I'm sorry. Have we met?" I turn to uh, Lady Tillingworth and with a look of concern. I think this man is not well, Lady Tillingworth. Yes. And he's not uh, inebriated, I can tell. There's something else that's wrong. Perhaps we should uh, arrange for him to be taken, to be seen somewhere. Yes, uh, if he's alone. Uh, as you're having this conversation, apologies, Lady Tillenforth, as you're having this conversation, a rather dapper looking gentleman with a sharp moustache uh, comes over and just says, ah, oh, Benedict, um, been looking for you, old chap. Come on, let me take you to your chair. Um, I believe you're, you're sitting over here. Thank you. Um, um, uh, Mr. Rincewind. Um, Mr. Rincewind, thank yeah. you very much for taking care of my my friend here. I'll, I'll just pop him down, ready for the for the speeches. I'm sure all will be well. Um, th thank you for looking after him. Come, uh, uh, Mr. Grantham. Come on, come with me. Uh, excuse, excuse me, my good man. Yes, excuse me. Yes. Uh, uh, he, this this man seems a little bit lost. He's he's looking for someone called Heather. Uh, can, he also can... forgot us, and uh, we just introduced ourselves. So there must be something else. Uh, perhaps he is. Uh experiencing some Mr. kind of illness. Grantham here is he's a troubled man. We're doing everything we can to help him, but bringing him out to such um, an event can be good for him. Please don't cause him more concern. I, I, I know your nature is good and I can see that you're attempting that, but please. Let me take him through for dinner. Have a good time. If if uh, we can talk after dinner, if you like. But what what is his uh, diagnosis, if, if I may ask? Are you a doctor, perchance? 
I'm not a doctor, but I'm an interested individual. Uh, Dr. Morton is his doctor, and I am someone who's very much concerned with Dr. Morton's practice. Look, come on through to dinner. Uh, 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 Mr. Grantham, please, uh, you, you can see um, Dr. Morton. Uh, you, you're on the next table. Go on, you can see your name, place. No, go on, go on. And you can see Benedict just kind of, uh, okay, he just kind of goes through, just like nodded through. Uh, and then this individual just turns to both of you. Look, I don't mean any disrespect. It's Christmas, but come on, the speeches. We need to be in there. If you'd like to speak to Mr. Grantham afterwards, or myself, or even Dr. Morton, you're very welcome. But let's not confuse matters for Mr. Grantham any further. I'd be delighted to speak to you after the meal. What, what, what's your name, sir? Huh. Huh? Dunnock. Charles Dunnock. Pleasure huh. to meet you. I'd like uh, for me and also someone who has better psychology than me to roll psychology, please. <laughs> Yeah, can I roll psychology to see if this guy's an asshole? Uh, you don't have to roll for that. I mean, he is an asshole. Okay. But is he evil? <laughs> because he looks evil to me. That's what I meant. He looks oh, evil. <laughs> um, oh, maybe you look evil and I'm getting confused. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's on my CV. Um, uh, okay. Uh, you can roll a psychology and depending on what you roll. Does he or... actually care about this man or does he is he using him for some okay. other reason? So that's mm. what I was going to get you to pin down on. Okay, good. Let's roll yeah. for that then. I'm, I'm rolling to see if he's just genuine. <laughs> like if he's above board, uh, I got a thirty-eight over forty-five. Okay, I failed, unfortunately. Andrew, you see him as an upstanding citizen doing the right thing by Mister Grantham in every way possible. And uh, as soon as he says, "Grantham, go and sit down," you just go, "Yeah, go and sit down, Grantham." The speeches are about to begin. Uh, <laughs> Lady Tillenforth, you don't see any ill will directly from Mister Dunnock. Um, but you're not quite convinced that he cares, let's say, about Mr. Grantham's predicament in the same way that you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lady Tillenforth leans towards Andrew and says, I think immediately after these um, speeches, we should maybe go and pick up with uh, this Dunnock gentleman and this Dr. Morton, just make sure that Mr. Grantham is actually okay. Uh, well, I've, there are several doctors here, so uh, they seem to be taking care of him. I'm not. I'm not sure what else we can do, and and I've, of course I do have to talk to uh, the Saren Law Blackwood about sailing. So oh, that, yeah. there's that. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, there's, there's that. I, I'll introduce you to Sir Augustus as well. Um, oh, I was hoping to to track him because I have a fifty track. <laughs> Maybe he'll leave a trail of brandy leaving to his table. But uh, uh, yes, yes. You, you, I you also do, have you survival you. traps, so um, I make sure get it. Gonna use those traps. Um, you do also have the table plan, so you know where these people are sitting. Um, uh, even better for tracking. <laughs> even better for tracking. They're in the place that the says the, the table seating says they'll be in. I've tracked them. Um, <laughs> Even on a fail, you can make that a success. Uh, so you're, you're going through. We're going to go back to the professor. Professor, you found some uh, scrumpled up pieces of paper. Everybody else is kind of sitting in their place now. Professor, you're the last one to kind of go through and sit down at the, the table with these other investigators. What is it that you've kind of read as you've been uh, walking your way through? The first one is Krampus, Krampus, have you any souls? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. Those who are the cheaters and those who like the flames and those who are the naughty boys who live, who always pass the blame. That's one. And that also has two marks of blood upon the letters. And um, the other piece of paper is the Feast of St. Nicholas is on the morrow. But this eve's one of dread and sorrow. Tis Krampus knacked and he's a coming, his hooves stamping a dreadful drumming. With clinging chains and foul breath, with horny horns that stench of death, with glowing eyes and many a bell, the rings of things too dark to tell. To hold your sweet little wee ones dear, 
and pray that they've been good this year. For if their behavior is deemed to lack, then Krampus shall put them in his sack. And you, Professor, arrive at the table, having finished read these uh, uh, documents. Is there anything, any roles? I, I know before you talked about making an occult role in reference to the first um, scrumpled up piece of paper you found, but is there anything you'd like to do now as you kind of sit with these fellow investigators at this table? I, I, will, I, will, I will say, well, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I am... I am lost for words by my burgundy bow tie. See these these missives scrawled and uh, arraigned upon the yon Christmas tree, speaking of European matters un, 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 unknown really to our to our good good souls at Christmas in England. Uh, see what you make of these, and and I while I kind of. Um, show them to everyone i will make an anthropology role because i am confused one one missive about krampus can be forgiven but three one would think that you know this is somewhat out of place for england of this year and um you know krampus isn't well known in england etc cetera, etc cetera. um thinking this is slightly odd and um so I'm going to make an anthropology role to see if I can think of why someone has, you know, what the relevance is, I guess. Yeah. Okay. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Let's see what that is. Okay. I um, really fail that really quite well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm lost for words as I, as I, as I explained to him. I know I can't fathom this. Perhaps someone knows why someone is dropping these around the room. So the, what of you, what of you, you're a journalist, aren't you? Could it be that we're maybe seeing somebody trying to stir up a little bit of uh, a little bit of conflict in the room, something, uh, some, some trying to put in a little bit of uh, dread of Christ in uh, into the people, as it were. You know, uh, some people do like to play tricks at parties. Let's have a look at these, and uh, Clarence will unscroll one of them. It's not like children's nursery rhymes. Well, this this one here, that's that's Bar Bar Black Sheep. <laughs> not even a particularly well rhymed one. This is uh, this is child's play, surely. Although looking at the writing, uh, do I recognise the writing at all? Ooh, good question. Good question. Do you recognise the writing? Hmm. Well, 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 while well, the. Um, disembodied voice in our heads is thinking. Uh, I, I will, um, I will point out while you talk about the rhyming. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That may be of interest, but but more, which is perturbing myself, is that that each are marked with blood. You'll note this is. I, I would I would stake that this is human blood. Blood. Where did you find these? Uh, they, they were scrambled and, and hidden amongst the uh, the branches of the tree. Well, the, the, the 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 sharp, pointy branches of the sharp, pointy Christmas. Yes, tree. but they're not that sharp. I mean, I mean, to catch oneself once is forgivable, but three times in a row, one might uh, question one's uh, manual dexterity. No, you're onto something there, aren't you? I, I have to say that the, the guest list at this party, some of the the people here, well, I wouldn't put it past them. Did you know that um, there's uh, there's somebody here who seems to be building some sort of hospital over at the castle, um, a hospital for the, uh, for, for, for the for the the mentally unstable? He whispers in the, in the 1919 way, as it is probably a taboo subject to talk about. Um, is this really something that Holmuth is is the home for? Well, I, I'm sure we'll see more of this in the. Uh, <laughs> in the forthcoming editions of the paper, as it were, but... Uh... That pricks up Lady Cordelia's ears, and, and she says, uh, now, 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 my dear boy, I, I don't want you to print any of this. This is very much off the record, but we were speaking to a gentleman just before who we, we think might have been a patient of one of the doctors here. Uh, I mean, if, if, there's, if there's disturbed people in this place, maybe it's not untoward that one of them would have 
put these missives into the Christmas tree and maybe, you know, maybe self-harm himself in a certain way to, I don't know, maybe to creep people out, as you say. Uh, do I know whether Dr. Jeruk is specialized in mental illness or not? Um, she's not. Uh, okay. She's uh, specialized in... Um, as in a very similar line to Dr. Jonathan Breeze, actually, she specialized in uh, kind of antiquities, ancient okay. antiquities, anthropology. Uh, yeah, it, it, she's, uh, d d you can see that she's a perfect new addition to the Holmes community. Mm. I'm just going to ask anybody looking at the, um, the letters, I'm going to ask you if you'd like to, you can make a, you don't have to, a natural world role. Uh, and just as you're making that role uh, and you're having, you're sharing these concerns and these thoughts, uh, you hear, um, you hear a glass being kind of tapped away in a very annoying sense that is the, I demand your attention at this party uh, kind of approach. Yeah, yeah. Are you sharing them around? I have some natural world. Yeah, the, I, I believe, Professor, the letters were put out on the table for you all to see. Okay. Um, so anybody uh, make a success or a hard success on, their, on, a, on a natural... You don't have to, but if you wanted to make a natural world role, you're very welcome to. I failed. I also failed by did 15. Anybody succeed, wish to use I, luck or... Want I, to I, I did actually roll under my uh natural world of 25 with a five so i made an extreme success as i'm standing there it comes to me in a flash of light <laughs> absolutely it must be and you, you you've been looking at these letters and you've been going and there's blood and there's two marks here and there's this and there's this professor in this moment you see that letting the others look at it you now see that these blood marks it's spittle it's someone who has spat that you can see the blood spatter, you can see the natural spray of blood. This isn't um, um, someone who's just marked or smeared or cut themselves or done this. It's 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 quite a vengeful, horrible, aggressive act, and that's what you can will, see. I will somewhat rather too loudly, given someone is you know doing this while they're doing that. I will rather too loudly ignoring that. So, uh, uh, you know, buy my burgundy bow tie. Look, this. Th this is spittle. Some, someone, someone's frothing from the mouth with blood and spat. These are, you know, I'll, I'll go into a lengthy diatribe, quieting as I go, as I realise the entire room is now looking at me and just quietly sit down and go, mmm. <laughs> yeah, as you kind of get into that, you, you kind of hear that. <laughs> 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 Of Holmoth, uh, friends of the Museum of Antiquities and uh, uh, friends of mine, I wish to start this evening's celebrations by recognizing the work of our very own Dr. Jonathan Breeze. Uh, and uh, you can see the mayor looks down the table. The seat is empty. Jonathan Breeze is not in his chair. But bizarrely, propped up on his plate, is a letter, uh, an envelope. You almost see this folded piece of paper uh, kind of folded and, and almost leaning against the chair, propped up very specifically to be seen. Um, the mayor, there's a few people up and about as well. So, you know, as much as you're at your table, there are still people kind of, you know, walking around, getting drinks, doing bits and bobs. So if that is, you know, something that you want to do to move, you you very much can, but do, do let me know as the mayor's kind of, uh, the holding court, should we say. Um, after seeing that uh, the professor's not there, the, you see uh, Mayor Alan Hope take a big breath. <sighs> well, we uh, are yeah, yeah, to recognise the work of Dr. Jonathan Breeze, uh, who appears to be somewhat absent. Uh, but what a, a better way is there than to congratulate Dr. Breeze on his voluntary retirement than by welcoming his successor to the role of curator of the Holmer Museum of Antiquity. So I'll ask you to raise a glass to Dr. Breeze and to the incoming Dr. Jarouk. Cheers. 
and there's a there's a big kind of you know glasses up everybody kind of chasing again there's a few people you know a person nipping to the loo doing this sitting themselves there's a bit of movement going on a few sips of their drinks etc and uh the mayor takes a big kind of swig of the champagne and you know side glance to wherever uh the the dr jonathan Bree should be sitting uh and then uh, kind of pulls himself back into the room. And uh, I would like to ask you to continue with this Christmas spirit and open your secret Santa presents. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is a generous act that uh, will hopefully encourage your generosity further in any donations towards the Holmuth Museum of Antiquities. Uh, 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 cheers to you all. Cheers to the, the, the museum and, and a very Merry Christmas. Uh, cheers. And uh, the whole room kind of cheers, cheers, is, and then there's people kind of, you know, uh, there's people kind of, you know, clinking glasses and chatting away, and um, people excited about the the, the secret Santas. Um, but what you also have is a few people getting up and kind of, you know, uh, mooching around. Most people kind of have their secret Santa, but there are a few people kind of, uh, uh, kind of just, you know, uh, finding other people in the room and taking over their secret Santa. Oh, well, should we open it together? And uh, people are beginning to open. I'm going to ask you all to give me a dexterity roll. I'd like to know what order you open your presents in. So I got a 91 over 30 so i guess i'm last uh i got 75 over 30 so i'm second to last <laughs> i got 20 under 45 that's a hard success i got uh, 20 under 60 which is also a hard success but harder than clarence <laughs> <laughs> got a hard success but it's a harder hard success uh okay excellent okay um just as you're opening your presence then um and i well i will ask i'm assuming you're opening your presence i don't want to take agency away from you um is that something you're all doing uh, everybody else in the room seems to have their presence and they seem to be unwrapping them absolutely mm -hmm. yeah don't yes. have a free gift in the mouth absolutely <laughs> who yeah exactly you never look a gift gift a gift horse a gift gift in the mouth um so you have your um uh you you have your presence uh you begin unwrapping them and you remember the gifts that you prepared. You remember the gifts that you gave to people. And you're really excited by what you might get, even if you did just get someone some chocolate truffles, uh, or whether it was uh, cufflinks, personalized cufflinks, or, or any of the presents that you gave. Um, but when you look at your presents, and Andrew, you're the first one. You, you, uh, you get yours. You take the wrapping. Actually, can you describe to me, Andrew, how you unwrap this present? Uh, it's probably about the size of my fist. Okay. Wrapped up. Andrew, Andrew would be the type to very carefully unwrap it and make sure to preserve the wrapping as well as the gift for later regifting. In his family, they do this thing where they use old wrapper every year. So he just he's collecting it. That's part of the present. He enjoys it. Um, I'm not sure how he ends up opening it first. <laughs> <laughs> he's very good yeah. at it. <laughs> Everybody else just um, watching his shock. <laughs> but uh, he manages to not tear even a little bit of, with his uh, hard uh, dexterity. <laughs> well, by the time you, you finally unwrap your present, Andrew, and you take your time and the, the wrapping is still very much intact, you are disappointed that you see that there is some marks on the inside of the wrapping. There's some black marks, powdery marks. And once you've unwrapped your present, you have a lump of coal. That's kind of funny, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Frank? And you hear almost someone on a table behind you almost echo. Oh, <laughs> a lump of coal. It's, it's huh. novel. Clarence, you unwrap your present. How do you unwrap yours? Clarence is very much impatient clarence has got to get to the the present as fast as possible but probably in the act of quickly unwrapping the present clarence probably gets his finger caught underneath some of the wrapping and tries to <laughs> rip it off but uh, unfortunately this means that you clarence do that loses you, the waste. Your, your finger there and you're doing this you almost yeah. got to rip it and the, the, the heavy rips the paper bang hits the table it's a lump of coal a lump of coal it's a bit disappointing, actually. 
I gave um, honey. And I got coal back. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Tillenforth. How'd you unwrap your present? She just sort of nonchalantly sort of goes about it. You know, she's she's got money. Like she's she wonders what people can get her that she can't buy herself. She unwraps it quite just, you know, normally and just has a look. A lump of coal. Yeah. She pops it on the table. She says, I didn't pay for those tickets anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> they were given to me as a gift. So yeah, I don't care. No, re-gifting, classic. That's why she's a lady. That's why the family has money. They're very clever with their gifts. If you're uh, rich, prof- you get given stuff. That's how it <laughs> <Yeah>. works. <laughs> the rich stay rich, yeah. Um, Professor, how do you unwrap your presents? I, and- first, I first, having seen everyone open theirs and getting coal, say, oh, I see you've all been naughty this year. <laughs> as I open mine, you know, forcefully, uh, believing clearly that this won't be cold, this will be some wonderful gifts because I'm clearly not having been bad, you know. Of course. And as you rip your present, knowing that you've been a good boy this year, you you rip open your paper and fall into the table is a lump of coal. Good but- God, someone's playing a joke on us. And as it- you say those words, someone's playing a joke on us, you hear an almighty horrific scream a cry you turn to the table next to you and you see a number of people at that table jump back there's one young man clarence you recognize him as your good friend joshua christopher he drops onto the table in front of him almost kind of in pain kind of screaming as he folds onto the table you see he's kind of holding one hand over the other hand and then pinning it to his chest at this point and looking out wide-eyed staring at everybody else at the table who are moving back and you kind of see him roll over his shoulders bunching forward back arching and then you hear his scream just turn from a scream into vocal cords ripping tearing popping this scream becomes something else you see this person you know fall backwards and as they do you can see shoulder kind of popping out of place and with each pop rib snapping here with each snap you Clarence as much as all of you can hear this but Clarence you are locked in on this you know this person even though they're a professional competitor you know this person with each one of these pops and snaps you hear them thrown onto the table the table snaps and flips and this individual drops Joshua Christopher drops to the floor with the table pretty much landing on top of him and you hear this from underneath this table next to you there is a number of panic, screams, movement within the room, people stepping back, a number of gentlemen's voices who seem to know exactly what's going on and know how to control the situation by going, oh, it's okay, everybody, just stand back, stand back. And you find yourself standing directly next to the table where this horrific act of uh, 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 um, violence, I suppose, has happened. I'm going to ask each of you one thing that you do in this moment. And I'm going to start, Clarence, with you, as you know this individual who's just dropped behind this table. What do you do? Much as Joshua is a rival, and as much as we've probably gone through the dance of stealing each other's stories at many different events, the the eggnog incident was probably just one of a culmination it's almost become a game at this point to see your your nemesis, but also one of your fellow investigators writhing in agony and dislocating automatically. I, I think Clarence is going to rush straight over to try and see whether whether they can help Joshua up, see, see whether he's okay. This is a, a genuine concern, almost overriding the... Um, almost overriding the rivalry that they've got. The rivalry has almost bonded them together more than anything else. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to, as you've run over there to check on your friend to kind of see what's happening here. um, And the others, you all kind of see Clarence kind of step forward and lean around this side of the table. Uh, Clarence, um, I'm going to ask you to make a dodge roll for me. (laughs) 
Ooh. <laughs> That's a, a 73 over 22. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna yeah, yeah I'm just gonna be making a, a just a roll for um what's he dodging guilt? Like what what's going on? <laughs> um Let's look at that face. No. Uh okay. Um okay, so I've rolled a two. Um okay, okay, there's only considering what we're playing, there's only one way this can go, Clarence. Um, you, um, you, you, you go over to the table and, uh, you, you see, you kind of run around to the splinted side of the table and you look down and you see that, 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 that um, uh, Joshua Christopher is there. You can see that it's not Joshua Christopher anymore. Half of the, the tuxedo remains. You can see now see black fur. You can now see uh, these hooves kind of broken through claws of hands. And then you can see the head as it kind of turns and, it kind of looks up to you. You can see red eyes. The skin is all turned into a mottled grey and pointed kind of hair. You can see on the head that there are these horns that twist out. And in that moment, it jumps almost through you, at you and through you across the room, head first with its horns, which is what you were dodging, which is what you didn't dodge, which is what it attacked you with and which it got a two. Oh, it's gonna pinch. It's gonna pin you <laughs> to the wall. Oh fuck. It it literally it kind of pushes through, hits you, slams you across the wall onto the other side of the room. There are screams erupting everywhere. You end up pinned to the wall. Um, I'm gonna give you uh an opportunity to make a contested strength roll. Now, this is actually gonna be really difficult for you, but this is gonna be potentially the one chance that you could survive this particular encounter due to that really unfortunate series of rolls just then. Um Sorry. but um a contested strength roll, okay? So I'm going to ask you to make a strength roll for me uh, and tell me how much you succeed by. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's a 98. <laughs> okay. Um, you you are pinned to the wall as you, you reach down. Uh, you, you begin to kind of push yourself away from this. Um, it's... Uh... <laughs> It essentially its hands grab your waist and then as it pulls its head and its horns out of you rather than just pulling out of you it just goes pulls up so it rips your torso in half and as it does like this it flings you across and your torso your top of your body uh, lands on the top table and spatters all over around where the mayor and lord blackwood is and klaus halstrom is and you spatter across the table your legs just drop to the floor where they are next to lady till and forth next to andrew uh rincewind and next to professor uh, goodall as um th they kind of just stand there and see an arterial spray of blood multiple arterial sprays of blood spatter across the room at this moment as this horrific horned beast-like hooved creature just kind of <sighs> looks up Mary Krampusnacht <gasps> Thank you for joining us for Act 2 of Secret Santa by T.A. Newman now available as print on demand and thanks to our sponsors of this production, The Storytelling Collective, about which you can find out more on our website, www.miskatonicplayhouse.com, and find us on the social media platforms with the links found in the show notes. If you would be so kind as to gift us this Christmas, you could rate this podcast and write a review to help like-minded fans find and enjoy the Miskatonic Playhouse. It only takes a minute and makes a huge difference. Until next time, when the curtain rises again. Hi, I'm John Hedge, and about 18 months ago, I released my first ever scenario on drive through RPG known as Alpaca in the Sheepfield. I released it by going through a program with the storytelling collective called Write Your First Scenario, and it was a really great experience. It really helped me go from someone who was a keeper, a player who enjoyed the game, and make the jump to an author and a creator. And since then, I've had a lot of success with it. Alpac in the Sheepfield has gotten a silver medal, and I've released three other scenarios. And now I'm a regular contributor to 
the drive-through RPG, and that's all thanks to Storytelling Collective. <laughs>